Brethren, I welcome you to today's service in the name of Jesus, Cat of Nazareth. I want to apologize for the technical hitch here and there. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your journey on this earth. As we preach today, the Lord will visit you with the word that will come from this platform in the name of Jesus, Cat of Nazareth. As we minister to you, the Lord will minister to you personally according to your heart desires according to your needs. As our faces are different, so are our heart desires different. Only God knows what you want. Only God knows what you need. And he is available to do it for you. Praise the Lord. We continue with part three of Greater Than Moses is here today. And to be frank, Jesus Christ is greater than anyone that has ever lived. Any other person that came before him, they were backed up by him. Even while he was still in heaven as God the Father, now that he came as God the Son, he manifested his ministry, he showed his, his compassion and his love for his people. Now gone back to prepare a place for us. And the enemy is coming to sow tires here and there. And he sent, he came back again as a comforter to comfort us, to prove to us that he is God. And so whether the devil likes it or not, we are winning the battle. We are winning the battle. We are winning the war. Whether it's spiritual or physical, for if God be for us, who can be against us? Remember that with Jesus, life is beautiful. Greater than Moses is he that was born of a virgin mother, greater than Moses is he, that came to set the captives free, greater than Moses is he, that walked upon the seas, walked upon the storms, greater than Moses is he, that raised Lazarus from the dead, and not only Lazarus, so many people were raised from the dead, by he that is greater than Moses. And so this hour, it is your turn, it is your time, to experience the beauty in the ministry of Jesus Christ, the ministry of the ministry of healing, the ministry of deliverance, the ministry of salvation. Remember that without Christ, this world is full of crisis because many have rejected him. And therefore, what we experience here and there is crisis. So I want us to, to surrender and hand over most of our predicaments to him and he will solve it. He will solve that problem. He will handle it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, may it be so that as you listen to the message of the day, the Lord will meet you at your point of need. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I want us to recap through the book of John, through the book of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, I'm going to read from verse 1. At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. The corn means grain. The Sabbath day means the day of rest. He went through the corn, and his disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the ears of the corn, and to eat, because they were hungry. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on a Sabbath day. But Jesus said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and they that were with him? Have you not heard what David did? The law is meant for lawbreakers. The law is meant for the infidels. The law is meant for those who are not with Christ. And that is when the law will capture them. 
Christ came to put to rest the adversities of the law made by man. The Sabbath day is, is man-made. Yes, they call it Sabbath day, but God calls it the day of rest for him. And for you, if you can, for you are made in the image and likeness of him. But is there any rest in this world? You go to rest when someone is dying, when someone is hungry, and then you go to rest? Is that how to lead? Is that how to be a leader? Many leaders in this world have gone to rest when it is not yet time to rest. To God, everything was perfected by him before he went to rest. To you that have gone to rest and allowed the poor place to suffer, what have you done? Can you be able to justify why you have gone to rest? Will you be able to justify why you are condemning those who are helping people who are hungry? Is there anything to justify the point that you want to make that people can go hungry because you want to rest. And Jesus spoke to the Pharisees and he said to them, why are you complaining? I am with these disciples of mine. I am the law and I am the lawgiver. And so you cannot come and teach me about law. Everything is in my hands. And so these guys cannot go hungry while I'm here practicing law. What is law? Law is supposed to make the people comfortable. It's supposed to protect the people from the adversities of life. And then pe people are hungry and they saw corn and they went to the corn field to pluck the corn to eat. They didn't even roast it. They are eating it raw because they are evangelists. Because they are going here and there preaching the good news. And then you want to accuse them. In some places in Africa, when somebody goes to somebody's farm to eat, to pluck something to eat, they will kill that person. That he has stolen. They will kill that person. They will say, why are you going there to eat? But to Jesus, someone that is hungry, the empathy should come from you to give them something to eat. They did this in the presence of Christ. And Jesus reminded the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the sad people and the wicked leaders of the, of the moment who want to implement law, who have cornered the law to be of their own benefit rather than the benefit of the masses. And Jesus spoke to them and said, have you not heard what David and his men did when they were hungry? Did you not hear it? You that you practice law. You that you want to profess law here. You senior advocates of nonsense laws. You justices of the Supreme Court and, 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 and inferior courts. All that, you, all that you profess is what will bring down the masses. What will destroy the entire world. That is how your judgment will go. But the judgment of God will not be the same. For God's ways are not our ways. He sees from the intent of his heart. And you also behave from the intent of your heart. You the judges, you the lawyers, you have plunged Nigeria into crisis and you are still moving and walking around. But to the population of Africa and to the population of Nigeria, to the citizens thereof, Remember that greater than Moses is, is in that country. 
Remember that greater than Moses is interested in your predicaments. Remember that God is interested in your case. You will not continue to suffer when you call unto him. You will not continue to languish in what you are languishing on right now when you call unto him. He will answer you when you call. And Jesus said to them, in verse 3, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and also they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Have you not read about that? Have you not heard about that? That David and his men went into the, the lost house, saw a showbread that they are not supposed to eat. They are not qualified to eat. Legally, they are not supposed to eat it because they are not priests. Both him and his followers they entered into the place to eat the showbread that they are not qualified to eat. But for you and I, you will say the law says this, the law says that even you will twist the law to, to match and to profit your selfish interests and to profit those who are in the same court and cabals with you. And Jesus said, have you not heard that story? If you have not heard that story, let me tell you that there are people who are supposed to eat the showbread. And David and his men were not among them. They entered into the house of God. They were not among them. Eh? It was unlawful. It was unlawful. For him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane. What is the meaning of profane? They break the Sabbath. They disobey the Sabbath. In order to save souls. Have you not read it? Have you not heard it? You that your own message is Sabbath, Sabbath, law and law and law. They profane the Sabbath. And are blameless. Why? Because they did it to save the soul. And so do not be a judge. In a matter that you are not appointed as a judge. Do not be a judge in a matter that only God is the judge in that matter. If you judge contrary to the will of God, you will pay for it. But that is by the way, Christ has come to set the captives free from the bondage of the law, from the bondage of democracy, from the bondage of hidden agenda of nations, and the deep world through democracy. They have, they, they, they have turned democracy to a shame. They have turned it into slavery. They have turned it into another war against humanity. But you know what? With Jesus, life is beautiful. As you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, He that is greater than Moses, he will answer you even before you call. He will answer you and make all things beautiful in your life. And I know you understand what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. You know in verse 6, But I say unto you, Jesus said, That in this place is one that is greater than the temple, one that is greater than the law, 
one that is greater than Moses, one that is greater than the Lord givers of this world. His name is Jesus. When he steps into your case, no kangaroo court will swallow you. Even if they turn it around against you, he that is greater than the law will step in. He that is greater than the temple of justice will step in. He that is greater than the lawgivers, than those who profess, who say they are lawyers, who say they are justices, he will step in. And when he steps in, you will understand what I mean. But with Jesus, life is beautiful. You will understand that he is greater than Moses. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know that many people are losing hope in Africa. Many people are losing hope in Nigeria. I understand that within two months, the cost of living has skyrocketed to over 1,000% as it were a few months ago. Yes, they have made laws, they have made policies, but let me tell you that those laws that are contrary to the word of God, that are contrary to the imaginations of God concerning you and your family, those laws will turn against them and swallow them. You will not die because you come from Nigeria. No. You will not perish because you are part of that society. But remember that only those who want to be saved will be saved. But those who want to perish is their choice. They can perish if it's their choice. How can I be saved? Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And experience his beauty. Experience his goodness. Experience his mercy. So that when the storm comes, he will stand on it. He will step on it. Hallelujah. Greater than Moses is here. And with Jesus, life is beautiful. Greater than Moses is here. And with Jesus, the storms of, of life will not swallow you. With Jesus, the policies of nations to continue to subdue the less privileged will not take your head. For he is greater than the temple. He is greater than the law. He is greater than the law of Sabbath. He is greater than the law of nations. For he made all things beautiful at his own time. He will step into Nigeria and the people, the legislators will do the needful to take the people back to Christ. And that will be the only solution. Change the constitution to have a human face. Do not hand over the sovereignty of the whole people to one man called president. For that constitution is a draconian constitution prepared by the oligarch military that thought they could remain in power forever. Things must have to change. If you are willing and able to hand over everything to God, ask God to appear in the spirit of Christ, in the spirit of Savior, in the spirit of the Messiah that he is, to set you free and to deliver you from the traps of the enemy, from the traps of the law, from the traps of the wicked democracy that is sent to you by fire, by force. Praise the Lord. May God intervene in your case. May God intervene in your situation. I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now, the Spirit of God has gone out to bring deliverance to His people, to bring deliverance to God's people, wherever they are. Wherever ever they have been tormented, wherever they have been alienated, God is stepping in. Many have become slaves in their own homelands because of law, because of rules, because of, because of 
what they call, uh, what do we call it, rules. And most of these things have no human face. But I know that God will step in. I learned that a bag of rice, a bag of cement, have skyrocketed to more than 1,000%. That when you step out of the shores of Nigeria, go to the next country, you will see the price of these commodities less. But because of policies of evil, the vice vials of destruction that they release from their policies, the country is going down. The people are dying. I even learned that some people were kidnapped in my own community yesterday, about seven of them. And one woman that I know very well has been shot dead. What a country. What a mess. And people are there calling themselves politicians, lawgivers, law interpreters, law this and law that. And people are dying every day. What is their sense of law? When he cannot save, when he cannot deliver, when he cannot give justice to whom justice is due. What is their sense of it? And Jesus said, there are people who are exempted from that law. They are operating under the law of heaven. There are people who are exempted from that law. Because of he that is behind them. He that is greater than the law. He that is greater than the temple. Hallelujah. But if you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. You would not have harmed the innocent. Because of your selfish policies, because of the policies of the rich against the poor, if you know who is behind these people, you wouldn't have done what you did. But you are going to pay for it. You are going to pay for it. They are going to pay for it. So don't worry. Brothers and sisters, you are passing through pains now. Bear it for now, for God is interested in your case. God is going to fight your battles, and you are going to have your victory. Victory at last, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please don't go yet. Please don't go yet. God bless you as you have watched this video. God bless you as you share this video. God bless you as you subscribe to this channel. God bless you as you join us to disseminate the good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to as many as are possible by sharing, subscribing, and commenting in all our videos. Remain blessed and lifted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.